Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. A pleasure, check that, an honor to be filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. Brian Sussman here out on the left coast, broadcasting, in fact, from the very station that Michael put on the map, KSFO. I host the morning show out here. Michael off this week, but again, it's just great to get behind the microphone and talk about all of the stories of the day that are of interest to you, including this one. This is this is red hot, folks, just off the press. It's a softening of longstanding policy that only makes sense. This policy was derived for the sake of national security and for the security of individual Americans. The Obama administration now is telling families of Americans held by terror groups, that would be ISIS, that they can communicate with their captors and even pay ransoms without fear of prosecution. This is Barack Obama. Now, let's break this down. Certainly, if you had a family member who was being held hostage by one of these heinous, barbaric organizations calling themselves members of a religion of peace. You would want to do everything under the sun to get that loved one back, wouldn't you? Of course you would. However, there's a price to be paid. No pun intended. President Obama has ordered the review of this after the deaths of Americans held hostage by ISIS. So the families of some of those killed complained about their dealings with the administration, saying they were threatened with criminal prosecution if they pursued paying ransom in exchange for their loved one's release. So now there will be no formal change to the law, which explicitly makes it a crime to provide money or other material support to terrorist organizations. You see, the United States prohibits the government and private individuals from paying money or making any concession to terrorists. This is because we didn't want more American citizens to become targets for kidnapping. Do you understand? So the Obama administration is saying, that's okay, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and fund ISIS. My God, you just, a rational individual has to every once in a while, please. For those of you who are liberals curiously listening to the program, every once in a while, could you please just try to open your mind? Do you understand what this does? Barack Obama, you just have to step back every once in a while and and think, whose team is this guy on? Is this his Ramadan gift to ISIS? Four Americans have been killed by the Islamic State since last summer. You had a couple of journalists. You had a couple of aid workers. In recent months, you had a couple other Americans killed while in custody. You had that journalist, Luke Summers, who died in that failed rescue attempt You had Warren Weinstein, who was accidentally killed by a U.S. drone in Pakistan. And Weinstein's family has been particularly outspoken about his frustration with the Obama administration. But can I tell you something? The Islamic State militants have released Western hostages after a ransom has been paid. So what will that cause them to do? Go out there and take others. The U.S. government has up until this point prohibited private individuals from paying money or making other concessions to terrorists. This is once again Obama going it alone. He's going on his own. He doesn't care about Congress. He doesn't care about the will of the American people. He doesn't care about national security. To him, the only thing that's worthy in terms of national security is fighting climate change. This is maddening. We're going to talk about this on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Phone number is 855-400-SAVAGE. That's 855-400-7282. Okay, so I'll tee off on that as the program unfolds. Oh, here we go. A North Carolina man has been charged with an alleged plot to buy a semi-automatic rifle he planned to use to kill Americans to show his support for ISIS. 19-year-old kid from North Carolina. I don't know what his Muslim name is. Whoops, there I go again. I let it slip, didn't I? The media keeps calling him Justin Sullivan. 
Well, guess what? He's a Muslim convert. I guess he has a Muslim name. How about telling us that? Can't go there. Oh, I'm a hater. I'm a phobe. Call me what I want. I'm concerned for my country. And I'm concerned about this this man in the White House. This guy was tracked by the FBI after his father called the police in late April to report his son was trying to burn religious objects in their home that were not of the Muslim orientation. So this guy ends up uh, approaching an FBI agent, this 19-year-old, trying to buy some weaponry, telling him, quote, the war is here. You can go to michaelsavage.com. I was just at Michael Savage's website, michaelsavage.com. Do you realize if you go there, you're going to see the story. This North Carolina Muslim convert wanted to kill a thousand people. He wanted to kill a thousand people. He wanted to kill a thousand people. Oh, now you want another story involving thousands of people? I'll give you one. Deportations. Tens of thousands of illegal immigrant women. Now, I will tell you, I was listening to Savage in the mid-90s when he started his radio career. I was working television in San Francisco. He had an evening program at the time. I, I, I loved listening to his program on my way home from the 6 o'clock news. I would uh, listen to Savage's program, and he started this thing called Borders Language Culture. That was his mantra and his mission in the 90s. It remains that way to, to, to now. I would love to hear Michael T. off on this sub- subject. Tens of thousands of illegal immigrant women and children who streamed across the U.S. border last year. Asylum, asylum, asylum. And protection status. Uh, there are, and we're talking about the ones from Central America. They were coming here in droves. Oh, and all the children. Yeah, the 23-year-old children with beards and MS-13 tattoos. Yeah, those children. Do you realize we had to take them for the word on this? How old are you? 17. No, it's like this. It's the kid with the beard going, I'm 17. Really? Premature beard. Yes, runs in the family. We were we took them at their word. They come across the board to asylum, asylum. Take them at their word. Bring them in. Do you realize that eighty five percent of them have not showed up for the court date? They're coached. They get here. They've been coached, or they are coached as soon as they get here. They're coached. They get the little piece of paper. Okay, now you will sign. You will show up before the judge at this particular courthouse at this time on this particular date. They take it, use it for toilet paper, and move on. Eighty. Five percent of them are not showing up. Eighty-five percent of the people who are not detained before their immigration hearings do not show up for those hearings. Where are they? Oh, they're just acting like wonderful citizens, I'm sure, somewhere in the United States of America. We'll get into that on the Savage Nation. Oh, here's another one for you. I mean, the action is hot and heavy, folks. Senate today voted to advance President Obama's trade agenda. Oh, let's just give him even more power. This was a 60 to 37 motion setting up a final vote for passage on Wednesday. It's that fast track trade authority thing, which is secretive. Can you believe this? The people that we elected into the Congress, they represent us. They represent us. It's a secret bill. If they want to read the bill, they have to go into a secret location to read it. As they read it, there's somebody standing next to them on guard, handing them one page at a time. If they take any notes, those notes have to be handed back to the security guard. In other words, the notes would be made only to log it in your brain more easily. No recording devices, no smartphones, no nothing. You make any notes, you got to hand the notes over to the guard before you leave. It's that secret. And then upon leaving, you're not allowed to tell anybody what's in the bill. Most of these idiots in Congress haven't even read the bill. And they're voting on this bill. The, uh, we are the, con- we're, and we're the government. They represent us. They can't tell us what's in the bill. And they're voting on this thing. All I know is those who are against it are really against it. And those who are for it, they probably have, the Obama administration probably has pictures of them doing something that they wish, uh, you know, hadn't been discovered. Of course, it works that way in Washington, D.C. Are you kidding me? 
These people, if their lips are moving, they're lying to you. I'm just becoming so cynical. After all these years behind the microphone, I am so cynical, as are so many of you. So here we go. And McConnell's all for it. And Boehner's all for it. And they won't even tell us what's in it. Well, thank God for some WikiLeaks. Say what you want about the WikiLeaks, but there's reason to believe that what's in this bill is another crap sandwich. Oh, so much of it is so good. But there's just a little bit. I don't care if there's a little bit. I don't want it. This is amazing to me. Could be some stuff on immigration in the bill that would harm our already broken immigration system. Could be some stuff on global warming and climate change in the bill, which would give the emperor in chief even more power. We'll talk about that on the Savage Nation with Brian Sussman filling in. And then we also have uh, coming up on the program a little bit of Hillary. Oh, yes, Hillary. Hillary Clinton. You know, again, I'm on uh, michaelsavage.com. There's a story here from Whistleblower Magazine. It's a WorldNet Daily publication. And they're on the cover of the current whistleblower. There's Bill. There's Hill. America's first crime family. Amen, amen, and amen. At least somebody's willing to say it like it is. Thank God for Joseph Farah and the team at WorldNet Daily. And we'll get into some global warming news as well, because uh, Obama wants the Pentagon to measure the ice at the Arctic. I know a little bit about this because in a past life I was a television meteorologist, and I've written a couple books on the topic. So I think the table is now nicely and neatly set for you as we continue with the Savage Nation. Uh, michaelsavage.com, the phone number is 855-400-SAVAGE. That's 855-400-7282. Don't forget the countdown to Mecca. This would be a wonderful book that you would be able to read to, to celebrate the freedoms we enjoy and that we want to perpetuate in this country. It's Michael's latest book, Countdown to Mecca. All right, Brian Sussman here on this, The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman in for Dr. Michael Savage, 855 400 Seven two eight two. I'm on Twitter and I'm reading something here from Fred Thompson. Remember Fred Thompson? He was a great actor, and I, and he, from all accounts, he was a pretty decent senator from Tennessee. Correct? Uh, he says a new report shows that 35 percent of Hillary Clinton's Twitter followers are fake. True, by the way, 35 percent of her Twitter followers are fake. Yet most of them are registered to vote for her in Chicago. <laughs> Very good. All right, we're uh, we're flowing on all cylinders. Some of the things we talked about in the last segment, just to set the table. Obama is announcing that the United States won't prosecute the families of hostages who go ahead and negotiate with ISIS on their own. It's his little Ramadan gift to the bad guys. We also have deportations. We now know that 85% of those coming across the border and not detained Oh, never show up for their court date. You're kidding me. And then, of course, the Republicans are pushing hard, so Obama gets what he wants on this mysterious trade bill. So those are some of the stories. Karen is calling from WABC in New York. Karen, you are first up. Ladies first on this, the Savage Nation. Go right ahead. Well, I just, um, hearing all of the, the checklists that you've given out, um, you know, there's plenty of blame to go around, but at the same time, I think really the media is such a bad guy in this because they've, you know, neglected to tell us really the truth about what's going on. And they're really um, protecting and uh, foisting, the, you know, the other guy's opinion on us. And I would agree with you. Karen, I will, let me just, I'll, I'll share with you something that I was told many years ago. I worked for CBS television for a long time. And I'll never forget, forget an epic battle I had with a producer that I worked with who will go unnamed. But this producer said, Brian, you know what your problem is? You don't know which facts to leave out. Now, can you believe that? See, that's what the entire media does, Karen. They'll tell you, oh, we're, we're, we're telling you the truth, but they're only telling you a portion of the truth. That's how they justify this in their warped consciences. That's what's happening. I guess. 
Um, I was going to say, too, about this climate change and everything. I'm, I'm a Catholic. I'm really disappointed in the Pope because he has no business, I think, in that, other than, yes, we're supposed to take care of creation. That was God's you know, command to us. But this has nothing to do with what's going on here. This is all political, and, you know, it's the financial end of it. Uh, so I'm really disappointed about that. But again, well, Ka- blame to Karen, God. I appreciate your call. Let me just, let me, I'm, I'm not Catholic. I, there are some certain things. I'm, I'm, cr- I'm critical, basically, of all religions, because uh, I'm a guy who believes in relationships, not religions. But all that said, uh, the, the Pope did say that. I, and there are certain things I really admire about the Catholic Church, some of their stands of morality. And he hasn't altered any of his stands of morality. The Pope hasn't. But if you read page, a paragraph 188 of this encyclical, this thing that he put out regarding global warming, he does say the Church does not presume to settle scientific questions or replace politics. But I am concerned to encourage an honest and open debate so that the particular interests or ideologies will not prejudice the common good. So the media is getting a hold of this, especially the the conservative media, and they're tearing it apart. But quite frankly, if you read this encyclical, it's it's a bit more balanced than many are wanting to admit. So I will just say that straight up front. Uh, Let me see here. If we could, I want to go to... Brad in Jacksonville, Florida. Brad, you got about 30 seconds. Go right ahead. Thanks for checking in on this, The Savage Nation. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I think we should come up with a program to reward a university here in the States. Uh, whatever university comes up with what me- the answer to what melted off the last ice age. Um, I'm sure it wasn't my Ford pickup truck or <laughs> or my gas grill or my lawnmower. These, these ice sheets were 5,000 feet thick. They carved out the Great Lakes. The earth warmed to a normal warming trend, and they receded back to the poles, which caused the oceans and other waterways. Brad, excellent point. Excellent point. You cannot blame uh, the melting of the ice during the Ice Age on dinosaur flatulence, let alone your Ford F-150. Appreciate your call. Oh, Brian Sussman. It's always a blast to fill in for Dr. Savage on this the Savage Nation, michaelsavage.com. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Nation. By the way, I can't wait to hear about this. It'll be July 2nd. Yes, 1,700 applicants submitting essays on what it means to be an American. This is the Savage Scholarship. So five winners will be announced July 2nd on this program. And they're each going to receive $20,000. That's a total of $100,000. And quite frankly, it's money Michael put into this himself. That's a real scholarship. You hear about some of these scholarships that kids are offered. And, uh, you know, 500 bucks, 1000 bucks. Well, what's that going to do for you? Seriously. Have you seen the price of college these days? That might buy you a little time at a junior college, which is fine. It's a smart way to go. It's economical. But twenty k. You could pay for a good chunk of college with that. This is awesome. So that's the Savage Scholarship winners. Then there's the Savage Newsletter. You can sign up at michaelsavage.com. Comes in two, three times a week into your inbox. Totally free. All right, some of the things we've been talking about and that we will talk about. I think this is, well, it's the big story of the day. Obama, once again, just ignoring the law. Just like he's done with immigration. Obama loves to alter the law, doesn't he? Oh, yes, he does. Just like he's done with Obamacare and with the EPA. But now he's ignoring the law. The United States has, we prohibit the government and private individuals from paying money or making concessions to terrorists. We don't negotiate with terrorists. And now we're going we're gonna to start. Well, we did this with Bo Bergdahl. That was totally against the law. But what what? Obama did with the trader, oh, officially the deserter, Bo Bergdahl. Obama trades him for five Taliban generals who are now rock stars among the Islamo-fascists. And in doing this, Obama has done, well, what has he done? He's put every service member in danger because the message has been broadcast far and wide. Capture a member of the U.S. military? Hey, they're worth five terrorists. But now, and by the way, that was against the law because Obama was required by law to notify Congress 30 days prior to the release of prisoners from Guantanamo Bay. He didn't. He violated the law. He should be behind bars. 
Obama doesn't give a rip. Do you understand this? And now, and now citizens of the United States can directly negotiate with terrorists. Is this his little Ramadan gift to the terrorists? Any American traveling, do you understand this? Any American traveling in any of the 57 Islamic countries is now a target for kidnapping. We'll talk about that. We will talk about the trade bill, which is moving swiftly through Congress. We will talk about ISIS recruiting in the United States. We will talk about Hillary's new Benghazi emails. We also might get into that. God, what a bunch of clowns. The people running this this uh, prison system up in New York. What a mess that is. And you got that little broad Tilly, that 51-year-old lady who uh, was sleeping with these murderers. And how did these murders get into the honor section of the prison? Somebody's been suspe- a prison guard's been suspended, but is he suspended with pay? I mean, that's generally speaking the way it works in California. When one of our prison guards is, uh, is suspended, it's with pay because they're so highly unionized. Just questioning, asking the questions out loud. And then I've got a story I want to get into. And this is only in California. We have this university system in California. And it's the University of California system. There are 10 different campuses. Currently, it's being run by Janet Napolitano. Remember her? Big sis, Homeland Security? Yeah, big sis. She runs the system. And now she's come out with this this handbook and this indoctrination system for faculty and staff, which prevents you from saying certain things at the UC. For example, you can't say this. We'll move on to the callers in just a second. Callers, I appreciate you being on hold. Hang on. You can't say, for example, on the University of California campuses, you can't say America is a melting pot. No, you can't say that. Because we're no longer a melting pot. That's, that's, that's insensitive. You're not valuing ethnicity and culture and skin color when you say that. Can you imagine? My, my family, like many of yours, came from other places. They wanted to be Americans. That was it, period. They just wanted to be Americans. It was a melting pot. It was a great thing. Melting pot, schmelting pot. Now, no, do your own thing. Hey, eat your food, wear your clothes, speak your language. Don't want to salute the flag? You don't have to salute the flag. But make sure you vote. Vote for me. I'll set you free. I'm a Democrat. My lips are moving. That means I'm lying to you. Okay, let's see here. America's a melting pot. Can't say that. Oh, here's another one. Don't ever, ever ask an Asian person, why are you so good at math? Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. Can't do that on the University of California. Can't say America is the land of opportunity. Nope. Can't say that. I'll tell you why in just a bit. They have reasons for all of these things. Can't say there is only one race, the human race, on the University of California campus. There's only one race. How? Uh, you know, when you tear off our skins, we all pretty much look alike. We really do. Uh, so this is all happening where the whole free speech movement began, what, 50 years ago or something like that? All right, let's get to the lines. 855-400-SAVAGE. And we begin with Ruth, WDRC in Connecticut. Ruth, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Hi, I want to talk about the trade bill. I think it's another example of uh, you've got to pass the bill in order to see what's in it. If people can't take notes and can't make copies and don't have anything in front of them when they're voting on it. What's stopping Obama from changing the whole thing before, after it's passed? Ruth, do you remember when my, now don't hold it against me, but when my congresswoman, Nancy Pelosi, got up there and said, well, we'll just have to pass it to see what's in it. Remember when she said that? And everybody was outraged. Certainly every conservative, anybody with a brain in their head, independents, libertarians, conservatives said, okay, wait a second. This is a crock. And here we are now with the same program regarding this trade bill. We'll have to pass it to see what's in it. And you get these you know, these faux conservatives like Boehner and uh, McConnell out there basically saying the same thing now. Exactly. It's scary because he could do anything with immigration or anything else he yeah. could do. Well, you know, people ask me all the time, are you for it or you're against it? What little I've been able to find out about it via WikiLeaks, for example, I'm against it. But... How could you possibly vote for anything that you haven't read? You are, you, you're, you're swearing an oath to the Constitution. You're swearing an oath to the people of the United States when you take this office. 
as a as a representative or a senator, you're telling me you're literally going to vote for something and you haven't read every word? What a bunch of sellouts in the business world. Here I am speaking to you from the San Francisco Bay Area. This is the Silicon Valley. Man, people are moving and shaking around here like there's nobody's business because it's all about the business. I can't imagine a contract going down at Apple or Google or Facebook or LinkedIn or Microsoft or you any one of these great companies that has a headquarters or a big prominence here in the Bay Area not reading every word of a contract. Can you believe that? Because these bills they're passing are no different than contracts. They're contracts set in stone. They're laws. And these idiots aren't reading them? Are you kidding me? That doesn't make any difference because the, the president changes it anyhow. He does his executive order and he makes decisions and changes anything. Good point. Good point, Ruth. Thanks for your call on this, the Savage Nation. Unbel- unbelievable. But that's where we are today. This is exactly what it's come to. And it, it happens slowly but steadily. And you have this younger generation of drones that, you know, oh, Facebook, they got that dialed. Instagram, boom, we're on it smartphone got that handled what's in the news man i don't know i just saw some headline of yahoo you know obama's cool man i saw him on yes forget I, stupid podcast they get passionate start to lose my uh my sense of morality i really apologize for that but here's the here's the deal it's Duke and, and Detroit on WJR. Duke, go right ahead. You're on the Michael Savage program, The Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Yeah. Hey, uh, you're talking about this melting pot. You can't say that anymore. Uh, what's the ramifications if you say it? Uh, what's the consequences? Yeah, you go to jail? You, you go to the time oh, yes. corner? Okay. What, 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 what if you say it? Well, there's heavy, so this is at, if people are just tuning in, Duke's referring to this new thing coming out of the University of California system. There are 10 campuses. And so they're encouraging faculty and even students to purge, you know, what they call offensive words and phrases from their vocabulary, like, for example, America's a melting pot. So what are the consequences? I guess, Duke, if you were a student and used America as a melting pot during the course of writing an essay, you would probably be marked down for that. If you're on the faculty, you know, faculties of campuses, it's a pretty darn tight fraternity. You would be marginalized. Maybe you wouldn't get the promotion. Maybe suddenly you would find yourself with the corner office next to the janitorial uh, room. They do things like this to place pressure to, to force people to conform on these campuses. Unbelievable. What happened to America? Help me out. I know. It, and especially what happened to the free speech movement, which was born on college campuses in the 60s and originated in the University of California system, where now they're turning it all around. So you're going to have this younger generation growing up with this politically correct mentality. And what's going to happen? Oh, you're a racist. Oh, you're a sexist. Oh, you're a homophobe. I can't believe you're saying something like that. This is where we're going, Duke. It's pretty scary. Let me, let me tell you, throw this at you real fast. California is a melting pot of idiots. <laughs> and he hangs up. All right. Pretty good. Listen, I, I was born here. I've had the wonderful pleasure of living in many other parts of the United States. But I've watched the decline of this state. I've, I've watched it for all the years I've been alive. And it's been a steady decline and it really started it really started turning in the 60s you had all these hippies that were trying to find themselves that came out here and now those same hippies are running the government you had that and um it's just it's a, it's a nut house but you at the same time what's really interesting about california and if you were to get outside of la if you were to get outside of san francisco suddenly it it turns red really fast it may not be that populous, but it turns into a red state really quick. You'll you'll drive in the Central Valley, and you see people driving their pickup trucks and wearing their cowboy hats. And you get into the mountains, and you see mountain people. A lot of a lot of folks looking like they're like they're <laughs> members of the Duck Dynasty. I mean, it's just this is what you see when you travel around this state. But you get into San Francisco, and it's this very it's it's you know a, a an upscale metrosexual environment. 
You get to Los Angeles, and they've got their upscale areas, and then other areas which would make you feel as if you're in another country quickly. But that's what's happening out here. But you get outside those major metropolitan areas, and you could be looking around saying, okay, and I'm in Kansas right now? No, it kind of looks like by way of terrain. I think I'm maybe in Texas right now. Whoa, goodness. I'm in uh, eastern Colorado. That's the way it looks. Okay. Well, we've got, let's, let's try, let's get Robert in at a WBAP. Robert, thanks for joining us. Speaking of Texas, how are you on the, on the Savage Nation? Brian Sussman filling in. Well, it just dawned on me that <clears throat> that's the invasion of free speech. And y'all have already touched on this point, but where do they get off? Are we so worried about offending somebody that now we have to curtail our speech? Yeah. I mean, gee, man, I'm, I'm one of those guys that's 180 degrees the other way. Mm-hmm. I don't care what you think about what I have to say. I'm going to speak my mind and speak the truth, and so be it if you don't like it. But yeah. this is just over-the-top ridiculous. It is over-the-top, and this is where we're going to go unless common sense begins to prevail. And, and listen, I appreciate your call, Robert, out of Texas, here on the Savage Nation. But it's really true, isn't it? Uh, freedom of speech means the freedom to share your property, you know, what's between your ears. And if that's offensive to someone, so be it. But this is where we're going. All righty. We've got a phone number of 855-400-SAVAGE for you. That's 855-400-7282. MichaelSavage.com is the website where I'm getting a lot of the information from that I'm speaking of on the program. Countdown to Mecca. It's Michael's most recent book. I highly recommend it as a great read for the 4th of July holiday to celebrate the freedoms that we do still enjoy here in America. On this, The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Does your face- Brian Sussman, please, proud, honored to be filling in for Dr. Michael Savage on his national program here. I love this. <laughs> this is a headline at Drudge. For sale. 2008 Hillary Clinton Confederate flag pins. (laughs) I'm going to order one. I'm going to order one. My liberal friends out here in the San Francisco Bay Area won't know what to do. And and by the way, you know, her husband was governor of Arkansas. They fly a Confederate flag there. She just doesn't know what to do right now. South Carolina's kiss theirs goodbye. And by the way, this should be a decision that the states make, not the federal government. But this is hilarious. Something that ta- people are talking about on the Savage Nation, if you're just tuning in, uh, this trade bill, the trade bill. Uh, the Republican leadership is pushing this as hard as Obama is. And the real crock here is it's secretive. We don't know what's in it. Most of these people have never read it. But if they took the time, it's a laborious process because you have to do it in a secret room and you're guarded by a secret uh, security guard and you can't take any notes But they haven't read it. But it's disgusting to me to think we, the people, are being kept out of the loop in this. Let's go to Ron, WABC. Ron, thanks for checking in. You're on the Savage Nation. Quickly, please. Yes, you you took the words right out of my mouth when I called earlier. I can't can't put into words my complete and utter disgust with the Republican leadership and the Republican Party as a whole. They're completely failing us. They're completely failing the election that we just had. They're promoting a trade package, which... Nobody even knows what's, go- what's going on with it. And why would they even disclose it to us anyway? The special interests are in their pockets. They're lining their pockets of money because the corporations are writing this trade deal, and it's going to benefit them. It's not going to benefit us. It's going to benefit them as a whole. And- You're right, Ron. Well said. You've been taking notes as you've been listening to Dr. Savage on this issue, and I do appreciate it. We've got much more to come. Brian Sussman filling in. MichaelSavage.com. This is The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Here's Savage is off today, but Brian Sussman filling in. It's always a pleasure to be behind this microphone on this big stage filling in for Michael. Of course, I work at KSFO in San Francisco, host the morning show. And KSFO is the station that Michael really put on the map back in the 90s when he began his local program. MichaelSavage.com is the website. I'm going to get to the callers in just a moment. Please, callers, remain on hold. We'll pick off a bunch of callers in a second. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. I'm at the MichaelSavage.com website. There's a story here. There are several stories that caught my eye. And there are several stories that are catching your eye because we're talking about them. And I think the one that's resonating the most, by the way, is a California story involving Janet Napolitano. She, of course, used to be the Homeland Security gal. They called her Big Sis. Remember her? She was one of these broads. You look at her, it's like, you know, kind of a stout little gal. You just sort of saw her maybe when she was off work with a T-shirt on, pack of Lucky Strikes rolled up in the sleeve. Maybe on a bike or something like that. But I'm not talking about a bicycle. I'm talking about a motorcycle. Anyway, she's come out with this lexicon. The things you can say and you can't say are the things you can't say on the UC, University of California campuses. Because she runs them now. And one of those things is America is a melting pot. Can't say that. Anyway, we'll talk about that because you want to talk about that in just a moment. But this is one from michaelsavage.com. This is... I. I didn't know it, and this conference took place in my city, San Francisco. So we had this big conference. It may still be going on today. There are so many things going on in the city, I can't keep track. But when it comes to the politicians, I really try to just avoid whatever's going on because if their lips are moving, they're lying to you. This was the U.S. Conference of Mayors, and Barack Obama flew in for this and tied up traffic in San Francisco, where the traffic's always bad anyway. And then he leaves from there and goes down to play golf in Palm Springs. The only reason why he came out here was so he could play golf. And he plays on this lush green golf course, and we're in the middle of a drought. So the carbon footprint, he's on a golf course, drought. Uh, Bad optics? Nah. Not for Obama. Optics, schmoptics. He's Teflon when it comes to the optics. Nobody cares. All of his drones. Man, we love him, man. He's cool. Saw him on Jimmy Fallon, man. He was great. Anyway, at this conference, all of the mayors elected a president. So this is the president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. And it's the mayor of Baltimore. I, I only found out about this by going to michaelsavage.com. And what my jaw dropped. Are you kidding me? Baltimore? If you were going to have an organization and you were going to elect a president, wouldn't you elect the best person for the job? But you're, all of these mayors are coming together. Are our cities in that bad a shape that you would you would vote in this person? Baltimore's a broken city. The unfunded liabilities in that city are off the charts. It's a city where the police, remember the mayor, the mayor allowed the police just to burn the place down, give them room for destruction or whatever she said. 60% of Baltimore's high school students don't even graduate. This is nuts. A quarter of the people live below the poverty line. The unemployment rate in some parts of Baltimore is 20%. And she's elected? Democrats have run that city for decades, including Nancy Pelosi's father way back in the day. It's Democrat-run top to bottom. And it sucks. Are you kidding me? You're going to take a mayor who sucks and put her in charge of all the mayors? Are you mayors nuts? Find somebody who has a great city where the budget is balanced, where there are no unfunded liabilities, where crime is down, where people live in harmony. Make that person the president. You guys are idiots. All right, let's go to the lines. This is, here we go. Here's one for you. Now, we were just talking about this UC system. Let me set it up a little bit more because I want to make sure that uh, Mark coming out of WMAL 
in D.C. is properly uh, set for you. America is a melting pot. Can't say that. I believe the most qualified person should get the job. Can't say that. Why are you so quiet? Can't say that. There's only one race, the human race. Oh, can't say that. Why, you're asking? Well, it denies the significance of a person's color or their race or their ethnic experience in history. This is what's going on on the 10 University of California campuses, thanks to Janet Napolitano. Now, Mark checks in. Mark, thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. You're on the air. Brian, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's sort of appalling to see this sort of happen all the way across the country. The university I attended some time ago, Lafayette College in East Pennsylvania, now has a biased response team. So those students who think they have some language or some other student in the college where they perceive some sort of bias in the university can report them to the administration, and then those people are investigated. And it, it actually, it doesn't really go to free speech because it's not really the state limiting uh, a person's ability to speak, but it really goes to the intellectual discourse. The college campus is, and I, is a place where you're supposed to have free-flowing ideas, and sometimes yes. people are going to be, um, you know, shocked, or sometimes gonna, their feelings are going to get hurt. And when you cut off all sorts of discourse like this, and this melting pot things of that nature are very, very troubling for me. Wow, and it's so true. So this was a bias response team. Now, my guess is, well, I'm asking the question, how would this bias response team uh, come to the rescue or aid, or how would they respond to, for example, the straight white male student? Because my guess is the school has been set up in such a way that they would look at that person and say, well, he has been ex- he has been promoted via white privilege. Would they come to his rescue the same way they might to others? Well, hopefully they treat everyone equally, but I just <laughs> get the suspicion that it's all about not, not making sure anyone's feelings are hurt. And really, yeah. if you think about the end of the day, that doesn't really help anyone prepare them for the real world. No. Because once they get out there, your feelings are going to get hurt from day one. And if you can't develop a thick skin, you're not going to make it. So, Mark, excellent I, call. Excellent call. Appreciate you checking in. I mean, he, he really said it well there towards the end. There is no better place, is there, for unfettered speech, unfettered free speech, than a university campus. That's where, as he said, the ideas are supposed to flow. Learn how to debate your position. If it doesn't hold water, hey, listen, maybe you should consider changing your position. And you can do this in such a way no one should be getting angry. You don't have to yell. You don't have to cuss. You don't have to name call. You've got an opinion. I've got an opinion. Let's talk about it. I have these discussions all the time. I'm sure you do as well. Why is it when we discuss things, for example, like marriage, if you believe in traditional marriage as being the only type of marriage, why is it that the other side has to say, oh, you're a hater, everything, you're a hater, you're a sexist, you're a racist, you're a phobe? No, don't go there, because in a high school debate class, you wouldn't be able to go there. Let's discuss these things Based on the merits, let's have a discussion, bring in your facts, build an argument, present it accordingly. Don't want to do that on our college campuses anymore. By the way, it's interesting because I threw out a bunch of these, and I'll throw out a couple more as we continue. But America is the land of opportunity. Can't say that on the University of California campuses any longer. Because listen to this. It implies that people of color are lazy and or incompetent need to work harder. So in other words, the person who put this guide together is actually the biggest racist. Because they're actually, listen to this. When I say America is the land of opportunity, that means everybody has an opportunity. But they're saying, no, it implies that people of color, I didn't say anything about people of color, are lazy and or incompetent and need to work harder. This, the, this was written by people with a chip on their shoulder. This is written by people who have no will of their own. They're absolute drones. It's incredible. 
Let's go ahead and go to Kevin at WBOB. WBOB, Jacksonville, Florida. Kevin, how are you? You're on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Thank you so much, man. Uh, you know, it's funny you were just talking about the racism part because uh, my my point kind of ties in that. I think it's funny how, you know, uh, there's all these race wars and everything with their Charleston flag and let's burn it, let's do this, and Obama going on on a podcast and Dawn at the N-Word, and I think it's just a front, really, to be honest with you, um, for the TPP trying to get rammed through tomorrow, because mm-hmm. we all know it's probably going to, and then we're going to be in real trouble. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Well, a lot of the, all of these things are used as distractions by the left, for sure. They love, they love a crisis because they can take advantage of a crisis, and they love all of these things taking place before our very eyes, and as we do focus our attention... Okay, hey, look over here. Look at the shiny object, shiny object. And behind the back, they're doing something that's even more devious. So you're right to a great extent. And the media exacerbates all of that as well, because at the end of the day, they're complicit in this. They're carrying the water for the left. And they do it by, as I mentioned in the last hour, by only giving you the facts that they deem necessary. In other words, they know which facts to leave out. Appreciate your call. Thanks for checking in on this, the Savage Nation. Uh, We have July 4th. Can you believe it? I mean, here we are. Summer is here. Summer is here. July 4th, just around the corner. And it's a time for all patriots to celebrate and commemorate and relish in our independence and thank God for what freedoms we have left. Countdown to Mecca would be a great read for your 4th of July holiday. So I admonish you to go to michaelsavage.com for that. 855-400-SAVAGE. That's the phone number. 855-400-7282. Brian Sussman, proud to be filling in on this, the Savage Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. Okay, so the Senate today voted to advance Obama's trade agenda, trade agenda, the Trade Promotion Authority. We're talking about that, as well as a lot of other topics, spinning a lot of play here on the Savage Nation. And the deal is the Senate now is going to have a vote tomorrow for final passage. So this is going to allow Obama to send trade deals to Congress for up or down votes. And I've never liked these up or down votes because then everybody's off the hook. Oh, Congress passed it. Oh, really? Did my representative vote for it? I don't know. It was it was an up or down vote. That's a that's a crock. If these people don't have the guts, I, listen. I elected you. I want to know what you're doing for me and the other people in this district. Up or down vote. I want to see your name and whether you voted yes or you, voted, or if you just voted. What did how did Obama used to do it? He always voted present. Chicken bleep. Unbelievable. That's just so you kidding me. Or these other ones who don't even show up for the vote. You're that busy, huh? Oh, your day's that important. I understand. You're a busy person. So McConnell has promised it's going to reach Obama's desk by the end of the week. Boehner's promised the same thing. They're all for it. Most of these idiots haven't read it. We don't know what's in it except what we've heard from WikiLeaks. And what we've heard from WikiLeaks is that... Uh, This may indeed impact immigration. And others are saying, oh, immigration? Yeah. And what about climate change? It's going to give this this, uh, man occupying the White House power like he's never had before when it comes to climate change. No Congress needed. Although, is Congress needed anymore? I'm watching this EPA going out of control. Let's go to Allen in Tennessee, WGOW. Allen, thanks for calling the Savage Nation. You're on the air. Brian Sussman filling in. Thank you very much. The question I want to pose is this. Um, All of us right of centre went to the midterms and voted to get uh, our uh, representatives to uh, start to uh, fight Obama. Nothing happened. 
Right. Uh, is there any way, is there any mechanism short of uh, dragging someone off to jail to impeach or uh, recall uh, Boehner and McConnell? You know, you bring up a good point that we need to remember, because before we know it, there's going to be another an ele- another election. And this last election, everybody told us, no, listen, we're going to fight Obama on these issues. That's why you need to vote for me. I'm going to set you free. We're going to fight him on this. They always... And even you know, had Boehner and McConnell, McConnell talking like they were like they were Tea Party members. Remember that? Just talking up conservatism, talking up the, con- uh, the Constitution, letting us... Be- <laughs> trying to make us believe that they were for us and not against us, when in fact they are against us. And I'm sick of the the, the traditional answer on, well, we, we are able to vote every two years, and we can vote them in and, office, in and out of office, and this is our way of uh, holding them accountable. Well, we'll never impeach them. We won't impeach Obama. There are opportunities and reasons to do this. We won't. I don't understand. The only thing I can understand is, Alan, Opposition research, and I'm very serious about this. So much opposition research in Washington, D.C., that they've got stuff on everybody, and that's how they hold them accountable. They've got stuff on uh, Boehner, stuff he's done. Per, uh, well, I, I don't want to get into the details but because I'm only guessing. I know the guy likes to drink. Or McConnell. You know, they've got stuff on this. Who, they've got stuff on all these people, and they know they can play that card if they have to. That's what I believe. Anyway, thanks for your call, Alan. An honor to speak with people from all over the United States whenever I take to this microphone filling in for Michael Savage. Don't forget michaelsavage.com. And also, don't forget, uh, you have the Countdown to Mecca book. And I'm really encouraging you as you get into the summer season, good quote-unquote beach read. Well, 4th of July is just around the corner. Might be an opportunity to celebrate America. In fact, it would be an opportunity. Countdown to Mecca. Just go to Michael Savage as well as for all of the latest news. Well, we're halfway through the program, and it's been flying by. We'll come back with more of your calls. 800 savage Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Sussman. On this, the Savage Nation. All right, I was in the michaelsavage.com website, caught unawares as the Michael. There's just so much news taking place right now, and that's why on this particular day, it's so exciting to fill in. It's like every dart you throw at the wall, you're going to hit gold in terms of a topic that needs to be discussed. But look at all of this. When you think about what's happening in this country right now, we have ISIS. This is Ramadan. Oh, Obama had the big uh, big dinner at the White House, from what I'm told, celebrating the religion of people. And I guess this was maybe his olive branch to the religion. I'm not really sure. But he comes out today and says, guess what we're going to do? We're going to make sure that for those of you who are Americans, who have loved ones being held hostage with ISIS, you can now negotiate a deal to have them released. What's he really doing here? In doing this, what is he doing? In doing that, he's allowing ISIS to have a new revenue source. ISIS presence is all over the world. So now they're going to be plucking American citizens left, right, and center because they know this president, the man occupying the White House, has just given them a big green light. It's been the long-standing of the United States government to never negotiate with terrorists. We can negotiate with foes, armies. We cannot barter with those who use terror as an instrument of coercion. Do you follow what I'm saying here? Even Jimmy Carter knew this. Look at Bo uh, Bo Bergdahl, the traitor. Well, officially the deserter. Obama trades him for five Taliban generals. These guys are now rock stars. Do you... I, I... I'm sorry. I don't mean to be cynical. I'm a human being. You know what the Bible says about the human heart? Every imagination of the human heart is evil. These guys were picked up on the battlefield plotting to having killed Americans. They were in Gitmo. We released them. Now, do you think they're just playing pinochle on the beach somewhere? No, they're plotting, they're scheming, they're rock stars. 
in the terrorist world. They serve Allah. They desire global domination, which has always been the goal of that religion, unless there's been a reformation that I've missed. So what Obama has now put each and every service member in danger because the message has been broadcast far and wide. Capture a member of the U.S. military? Hey, they're worth five terrorists. But you see, this just isn't about Bo Bergdahl. This is about other members of the military placed in harm's way by the weakest commander-in-chief that has ever commanded the United States military. And by the way, Obama broke the law. When he traded those prisoners, he broke the law. He was required by law to notify Congress 30 days prior to the release of prisoners from Gitmo. He didn't do it. He broke the law again. He altered the law with Obamacare. He denies the, he changes the law when it comes to immigration. He changes the law when it comes to the environment. When are people going to get it? What this man is doing, oh, he's a constitutional attorney, my rear end. This man is a dangerous menace to this country. And when he said he would fundamentally transform it, guess what he is? How could people go for that lie? I'm just asking you the question. We'll take your calls in just a moment. But this fundamental transformation thing, listen, I've been successfully married now for a long time. I'm an old, I got got married when I was very young. My wife and I were both, we've, we've, we've been in love with each other. Got married shortly thereafter. It's worked for over 30 years. Could you imagine if I would have said to my wife prior to marriage, I love you. I love you. Love everything about you. I want to fundamentally transform you, though. Seriously, I want to fundamentally transform you. You know, maybe the nose. We can work on the nose. You know, maybe a little breast augmentation. You know, maybe we could... Could you imagine? I would get slapped upside the head and dumped so fast. But this is exactly what Obama's done with America. I want to fundamentally transform America. What? And he is. Laws are to be followed by the chief law enforcer of the country, but Obama doesn't give a rip. He continually undermines Congress. He creates new laws with a swipe of his pen, disregards laws he doesn't like, Obama, a- Obamacare, amnesty, the environment. Now he wants to give this mysterious and dangerous trade bill a whirl. And ready to give it to him. Do you realize, look at your history, folks. Andrew Johnson was nearly impeached for significantly less than what Obama's done. Johnson's crimes, he fired an official without the consent of Congress. Now Obama says citizens of the United States can directly negotiate with terrorists. Isn't this amazing? His little Ramadan gift to the terrorists, I ask? Any American traveling in any of the 57 Islamic countries target for what? For kidnapping. It's a revenue stream for these guys. Whose side is this madman on? Oh, yes, and he is mad. I've heard Dr. Savage talk about it. He's talked about it in clinical terms. But can we just say this? He's drunk on power, or maybe he's just tipsy with power. We ain't seen nothing yet. Happy Ramadan. Unbelievable. Let's get to the lines. Because I know a lot of you have a lot to say here. We've talked about political correctness on the campus. It's amazing how this story is resonating with this audience, because you understand Politically correct speech is not free speech. And on the University of California campuses now, it's happening like no one ever dreamed possible. And if it's happening in California, you know what happens. These kooks spread their ideology towards the right, towards the East Coast. So now we can't say on the UC campuses, America's a melting pot. Oh, can't say that. You can't say there's only one race, the human race. Can't say that America is opportunity. Can't ask an Asian, Latino, or Native American, why are you so quiet? Because they say that's tantamount to giving to assimilate to the dominant culture. Can't say affirmative action is racist. Liz is at WBAP. Liz, thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Hi, Brian. You know, um, you were just talking about you can't be a certain thing. Apparently you can be, I guess, have brown skin. 
And if you're conservative, that all goes out the window. The melanin drains from your skin, and you leave yourself open to all kinds of insult because it doesn't fall under the shadow of political correctness. Mm -hmm. People seem to think that political correctness has something to do with sparing people's feelings, when in fact it has absolutely nothing to do with people's feelings and everything to do with advancing a liberal political agenda. Absolutely. Well stated, Liz. Thanks for checking in on this, the Savage Nation. It, you know, isn't it interesting? You talk about diversity, because that's what it's all about these days, being diverse. I'm looking at the people running for president on the Democrat side of the aisle. Kind of a homogenous bunch, wouldn't you say? Seriously. I mean, they all have the same, they all have one thing in common. They're all, <laughs> they're all white and they're all rich, and they made their money the old-fashioned way. Through crony capitalism. (sighs) And then I'm looking at the Republicans, and some of them I really like, but there's... I mean, I I, I like Bobby Jindal a lot. I've always... I guess he's throwing his hat in the ring. I think Ben Carson is a brilliant man. I knew of him when he was... I knew of him in the early 90s. My wife bought a book... It was his autobiography, or maybe, I don't know if it was an autobiography or biography, but it was about, I guess it was a biography. I don't know what it was. It was about Ben Carson. I think it was called Helping Hands or something like that. So that's where I learned about Ben Carson as a neurosurgeon in the early 90s. When the kids were very, very young. Uh, and he, he's a problem solver. That guy looks at life and death issues and says, okay, we're going to do this. He's a brilliant man. There's diversity. I just named... Uh, I named Bobby Jindal, and I named for you Ben Carson. And we've also got a woman inside, last I checked, from the San Francisco Bay Area, Carly Fiorino. But I guess she's not a real woman. I guess Ben Carson's not a real black man. I guess Bobby Jindal's not a real man of color. Oh, no, not at all. Because they're of a conservative, a conservative, they see the world through a conservative lens. They're not ideologues. John's speaking to us from KSFO in San Francisco. John, you're on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Go right ahead. Talk to us about the University of California banning these words and phrases. Yes. Quick question. Why doesn't someone file an easy win that is in federal court? You file an action about First Amendment, and you recite that the University of California receives government funds Mm -hmm. and therefore deserves First Amendment protection, and they cannot ban words particularly words that say you can't use the phrase land of opportunity. It should be an easy win in federal court for anyone who, I guess, goes to the school, so therefore they could file a lawsuit. Well, I guess it's sort of like, um, you know, some people are more equal. Some people have more speech rights than others these days. I think that's what it comes to. Listen, I agree with you. It's wrong. I agree with you. A law should, should be filed but isn't it interesting that we've come to that point where freedom of speech is no longer freedom of speech politically correct freedom of speech oh yes you can say this but we don't want to offend so we're only going to say things that don't offend that's why guys like orwell had it right they saw this coming years and years ago appreciate your call here on the savage nation you know there's another story in the news and we're going to get to more calls but this was a L.A. Times story from this week. Are conservatives more likely to stick to a diet than liberals? Oh, this sounds humorous right off the bat, but there's really something to this. And this was a study published yesterday in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. It's a highbrow academia publication. And they looked at some pretty decent studies. You know, I saw how they put these together, and I'm thinking, all right, these are... These are thorough. But what they came away with was liberals fail at their diets more than conservatives do because liberals believe in free will. See, this kind of speaks volumes to what we're talking about with freedom of speech on the campuses. The liberals don't believe in a free will, whereas the conservative does believe in a free will. Case in point. The conservative looks at the poorest amongst us and says, You really can get out of this mess. It will require some work, but if you just get your butt off up the couch and go out there and get you could 
Make something of yourself. You may not be a Bill Gates, but you could make something of yourself. The liberal says, no, 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 no. We don't want you to have to go. It's, you can't help it. You were raised in this ghetto. Your parents were raised in the ghetto. This is just who you are. We, fair. America's unfair. We need to help you. We need to give you the food stamps. We need to give you the housing allotments. We need to give you your Obama phone. We need to make sure you're paid for. And therefore, you end up trapping these people. They end up getting trapped. And when they get trapped, what do they become? A willing voting block. So the liberal says, oh, these poor souls. They can't help it. They're stuck. We have to help them. See, they don't believe in a free will. The way a conservative would. The conservatives say, no, you can do this. And if you just listen to my advice, you really will be able to do this. So that's why conservatives are better at dieting than liberals. Again, excellent article in the Los Angeles Times. We'll talk more about that. Just so talk to you about your calls at 855-400-SAVAGE as we discuss the win- uh, the, the, all the news of the day. Uh, Savage Scholar. Winners. They're going to be announced July 2nd. This is going to be very exciting. 1,700 applicants submitted essays on what it means to be an American. So this is something with. There are going to be five winners. They receive scholarships of $20,000 each. It's a total of $100,000 for Michael's pocket. Cool stuff. That'll be on July 2nd. Don't forget the Savage newsletter. Just sign up, michaelsavage.com. It's free. Arrives two or three times a week in your inbox. Totally free. Savage.com. Brian Sussman, pleased to be filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 500-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets. Silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Score one for Obama. Just cruising around the... By the way, Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. Uh, it's amazing. I'm cruising the uh, Al Gore's internet, the one he created, as you'll remember. And it's everywhere. Oh, boy. Key victory for Obama on trade bill. Uh, there's one guy who's spoken out of, against this big time, and that's Ted Cruz, who is running for president. He said about the trade bill, this Congress has become enmeshed in corrupt Washington backroom dealing, along with serious concerns that it, the trade bill, would open up the potential for sweeping changes in our laws that trade agreements typically do not. Now he's talking about immigration and climate change. So he's read it, but he can't tell us exactly what's in it because these guys have to take a a pledge of secrecy after reading it. What kind of an America is this? John is calling from Kentucky, WVLK. Quickly, please, you're on the Savage Nation. Yeah, good afternoon, Brian. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I don't see how this can happen. It looks like to me the uh, Republicans uh, that we voted in have done sold us out. Right. They, there is another person that was against a trade agreement, and that was Donald Trump. And of all the candidates that have uh, announced running for president, we need somebody that's got the guts, somebody can think on their own and do on their own. Somebody that's not afraid of Barack Obama and Donald Trump fits the bill. That's what we need, man, because the current government and the administration is against everything that I was ever uh, brought up to love and believe in in America. And, and John, it's true. It's true that it's true that uh, Trump has said this is a job killer. Can I just ask you a question? I'll give you five seconds to respond. Why do the people in Kentucky keep voting in this McConnell guy? I don't know. Uh, I think he kind of deceived us. I, I think he was uh, trying to say he was going to do one thing. No, you're right. He what? This way he did. He deceived you. That's what they do right before election time for him every six years. Brian Sussman on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. No, it is an exciting program, and I've been listening to it now since the mid-90s. Brian Sussman here, out on the left coast, San Francisco. I work for KSFO, have a morning show with my beautiful sidekick, Katie Green. Michael actually calls into our program on a regular basis because, as you know, he's based in San Francisco. And he's basically the guy, not basically, he is the guy that put our station on the map as a conservative outlet, a conservative icon, you know, the better part of 20 years ago when he first started in local radio. And I was a listener back then. And I remain a listener to uh, this show and now occasionally get to fill in. It's a beautiful thing. So a lot going on. I think you'll get a great sense of what we've been talking about for the last two hours when you listen to this hour of the program, because I'm going to take a lot of callers, and you, the caller, will basically be able to fill in the blanks for those just tuning in. Let me just say this. Jeff Sessions, I've never met him. I've interviewed him a couple times in my program on the left coast. He's a senator from Alabama. I really like him. I believe he stands for America. He stands for the Constitution. He doesn't want to fundamentally transform it, but he'd like us to fundamentally get back to our roots, our roots of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, our roots of separation of powers, our roots of states' rights. Anyway, Senator Jeff Sessions, he released this statement in response to the Senate's vote to advance this fast-track trade bill. Quote, Americans increasingly believe that their country isn't serving its own citizens. Did you hear what I just said? I'll repeat it. Americans increasingly believe that their country isn't serving its own citizens. They need to look no further than a bipartisan vote of Congress that will transfer congressional power to the executive branch and in turn, says the good senator from Alabama, to a transnational Pacific Union and the global interests who will help write the rules. Did you hear this? This is what the trade bill is all about. It gives Obama more power. And guess what? Now we will bow to the transnational Pacific Union. That's where we are. That's where we're going. It's all part of the fundamental transformation of America. Now we get to the calls. And you'll hear about all the other topics we've been talking about. On the Savage Nation. Let's begin here with, well, let's talk about uh, so many great callers here. Okay, we'll go to Greg at uh, KERN. Greg, I assume you're calling from the Bakersfield area, California? Yes, sir, I am. Well, very good. And, you know, I was trying to explain to the audience of the Savage Nation earlier in the program, when you get outside of Los Angeles, when you get outside of San Francisco and start traveling around the state, it gets red really quick. Bakersfield, a key example of what I'm talking about. Thanks for calling from beautiful Bakersfield, Greg. Go ahead and talk. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm one of those guys from Oildale, so I know very good and well, and that's a little, kind of a little suburb outside of Bakersfield that's predominantly working-class people from the oil fields and stuff, and, and uh we really love this community and stuff over here. And uh, what I'd like to talk about is this free trade. It, it's it's an absolute nightmare. Uh, Senator or uh, Congressman Kevin McCarthy has absolutely stabbed us in the back a thousand times. What a sellout! Now, folks may not know who Kevin McCarthy is. You see him sometimes at the podium when the Republicans are speaking. He's, uh, I don't know, Boehner's second or third in charge. Uh, this guy, I remember, you know, when he's when he's politicking here in California, just before election time, oh, my God, he'll speak at a Tea Party rally. He'll speak at some conservative group, this, that, or the other. He's the biggest sellout. He's the problem with Washington. Guys like him are the problem. And he's exposed every time there's a vote. He marches to the orders of the ruling class, marches to the orders of the establishment, but, boy, when it comes election time, he loves taking that conservative money, doesn't he, Greg? You ain't kidding, he does. You know, and one of the things that he done here fairly recently was he had these uh, group of women march up here from L.A., uh, groups of La Raza women, and he gave them time 
in his office. And when's the last time he gave a citizen and one of his uh, constituents any of his time? Yep. He gave time to a brown racist group to come into his office here in Kern County when he won't give any of us any time at all. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, La, La, La Raza, the race. Can you imagine that? The race. A group called The Race. It's disgusting. Greg, I, I listen, the bottom line is, you're right, he's in on the fix, and I appreciate your call out of beautiful Southern California. Now we go to, this is one of the things we've been talking about. Let, let's go to, we were talking about welfare earlier. Gary is at WABC. Gary, the topic of welfare came up on the Savage Nation. I had mentioned that here in San Francisco we had the Conference of Mayors. They elect the mayor of Baltimore to be their president. So she's the president of all the mayors in the United States of America. And I'm thinking of her state, Baltimore. That's That city, or her city, Baltimore, Baltimore's broken. Their education system sucks. Their unfunded liabilities are through the roof. Their, their budget is unbalanced. Their police force, as you know, is in shambles. It's a town that is riddled with crime, and they take this mayor of this failed city that's been run by failed Democrats for decades and boost her to the, the position of president of the U.S. Conference. Can you believe this? It's unbelievable, and unfortunately, that's the future of America. But first, on McConnell. McConnell is a Pee Wee Herman lookalike. He never sold you out because he was never on your side. Now, let's get to the point of this and really to the meat of this thing. You ever notice these politicians, these nickel and dime politicians, will always scare the senior citizens? Oh, we're going to run out of Social Security money. Right. They never talk about running out of welfare checks, folks, because the fix is in. The Republican Party is not on your side. The fix is in in the, in the primaries. The fix is in with judges they appoint. They control the whole system. They want to flood this country with illegals. The illegals get out, get the welfare. They get every benefit. I'm the one who said on this air that you folks out there will not be getting the good medical coverage. A lot of you will not get it. And the invaders will be getting it. And who is getting the top-notch medical coverage? This should outrage everyone in the country. Those animals down in Guantanamo Bay had access to the best doctors in America. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And now we're letting them loose. I appreciate your call here on KSFO. That's how he's going to close Gitmo. He'll just empty it out by all these deals. Trade a Bergdahl for five Taliban generals. And then, and then the other thing that's happened today, if you're just tuning in, you've had a life. See, the people that listen to this program have a life. They're workers. They're producers. They're really concerned and busy with their family. They're involved in their community. Not as community organizers and agitators, but they're involved in the community. They're coaching Little League. They're involved in the Boy Scouts. They're involved in the Girl Scouts. They're involved in their schools helping out. Plus, they've got a job. They're involved in their church. So if that's you, you're just tuning in, getting caught up in the day's news. Oh, here's a good one for you. Obama decides, even though it's against the law, he decides, now nah, we're not going to enforce the law. So if, God forbid, you have a family member who's being held hostage by ISIS, now you can start negotiating with ISIS on your own. Hire a lawyer, do a negotiation. Oh, they want $2 million? Fine, send them $2 million. Do you know what this is going to do? for the business that ISIS is involved in of spreading their hate and their filth. Do you know what this is going to do? This is a new revenue stream for these guys. If I, uh, Americans should not be traveling in any one of these 57 Islamic countries. Don't go there for tourism or otherwise. Don't go there. Are you kidding me with this type of a uh, racket going on that Obama's allowing before our very eyes? I'm saying it was his little Ramadan present to those of the faith that involves this religion of peace. Here, guys, you want a caliphate? You want to spread your filth? Here's a little present for you, a new revenue stream. Have fun. One of the things we're talking about, uh, we're also talking about free speech. This is an interesting one. University of California system is saying things like, things like... Uh, let me see. What are, what are the things? Hold on. Here it is. Got to get these specific for you. America is a melting pot. Oh, can't say that. Uh, another one is, let me get these for you, and then we'll get to Jim the caller. There's only one race, the human race. Can't say that. America is the land of opportunity. Can't say that. Affirmative action is racist. Can't say that. 
Let's go to the caller now. This is Jim listening online, KSFO.com. Jim, how are you? You're on the air. Brian, for one, I will never allow myself to be PC, politically castrated, by these political prostitutes <laughs> and these cowards behind the pulpit. You know, you, you mentioned earlier, why is this happening? We're pointing the blame at the people attacking our free speech, which is correct. But the tyrants that are putting their boot on our necks, okay, we're allowing it. I don't believe the Founding Fathers... Uh, chose wealth over liberty or the, or the tranquility of servitude over the animating concept of freedom. And that's what we have to do. We have to not be intimidated by these bullies in the schoolyard, in this case, the, uh, you know, at the workplace, on the, um, by our families. Yeah, and I, I really hope that we don't head that way, but I, in Mike Savage's book, uh, Stop the Coming Civil War, if this continues, Brian, I'm really fearful of what my 25-year-old son, who just turned 25 on Father's Day, what he's going to face when he's my age. Oh, gosh, I pray yes. Every day we don't have a civil war, but every day these people are pushing us further and further. And there, you can only push kicking dogs so many times, Brian, before it bites you in the leg. And, Jim, the indoctrination is starting early. I mean, that's why these liberals want, you know, they want uh, universal pre-kindergarten. They, they want to get them as young as they can so that they are able to effectively indoctrinate them going forward. I mean, it goes back to, and I thank you for your call, Jim, of the Savage Nation. It goes back to something comedian Jerry Seinfeld uh, said recently. You know, don't you don't do comedy at college campuses anymore because it's so politically correct. And then he was talking about his 14-year-old daughter. He said, hey, you know, maybe we should start going to uh, New York City more often because you're getting a little bit older and you're going to want to start hanging out with boys. And she said, that's so sexist. See, the kids, sexist, racist, phobic. That's where they go now, automatically. So right off the bat, their speech has been marginalized and they've just, they've been rolling over and taking it. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. By the way, michaelsavage.com, lots of great information there. And might I also encourage you to sign up for his newsletter. The Michael Savage newsletter arrives two or three times a week in your inbox, totally free. And all that more, just go to michaelsavage.com. 855-400-SAVAGE, that's the phone number. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hey, Savage. So the trade bill, Brian Sussman, by the way, filling in for Michael Savage, the trade bill is moving forward, and of course this will get passed, and Obama will get the power he, he pines for, he craves, he lusts for. And then we'll have, if all of this goes through, according to what little we know about it, because we're not allowed to know the details, oh, we peons, I mean, we couldn't be afforded those, we just wouldn't understand. You know, the details are for the special people, the elected representatives, most of these people didn't read the bill, but they're voting for it because they know if they don't, in some cases, Boehner won't give them the funding they need next election. McConnell will do the same. That's how the game is played. I'm convinced that the Democrats probably have something on McConnell and Boehner such that they always do these crazy things to the very people who elected them. And then come election time, they start parading around like conservatives. Oh, they've got the rhetoric so down. So what's in this trade agreement? Well, we don't know. What we do know is that it appears as if we're going to be giving up power. Executive power to Obama, bypassing Congress, fast-tracking these trade deals, bowing to the knee of the Pacific Rim countries. It may have an impact on our immigration laws, Congress not required. may have an impact on climate laws, Congress not required. John's at WTMA in South Carolina, John, what else do you think is going on with this big power grab, this trade bill, this quote-unquote fast-track legislation? Well, in the last couple of weeks, it's been noted that uh, China has 
had a uh, agenda of trying to get America to disarm its citizens, and uh, it's been uh, seems to have been Obama and the whole left's uh, agenda to do that all along. I'm beginning to wonder if maybe that's not in that bill, and the senators and the people who are having to read it are uh, signing on to that uh, uh, pledge. Uh, of non-disclosure because they are afraid that if they re- release that info too soon, uh, there may be another shot heard, uh, first shot heard around the world. Well, John, I listen. We don't know exactly what's in the bill because we haven't had an opportunity to read it. But we can only were they sending a message to our leaders? Don't do anything on this trade bill we don't like. Otherwise, we'll hack the beep boop out of you, left, right, and center. And now they're saying, by the way, up to 40 million Americans may have had their identity compromised by that big hack. We were told it was four. Again, if their lips are moving, they're lying to you. Now we're saying it may be as many as 40 million. That means a lot of you had your identities compromised because the government can't get it right. So these are some of the things we're talking about on the Savage Nation. Uh, something else we're talking about is 4th of July just around the corner. And I highly encourage you. We had a caller just a few minutes ago talking about Michael's, one of his recent books, uh, Stop the Coming Civil War, which did get a lot of attention and became a bestseller. Well, you have Countdown to Mecca. This is his wonderful fiction composition, which is based in so much reality Be a great read for the 4th of July. Great way to celebrate our freedoms while we still have them. Go to michaelsavage.com for information on that. Always a pleasure. Always an honor to serve. And we've got the power half hour coming up just around the corner. Brian Sussman in for Michael Savage on this. The Savage Nation. Rip through a bunch of them for you right now. This is the one that's gotten a lot of attention from those listening to the Savage Nation. And for obvious reasons. This is amazing. But this is where we are in America. This is where we're going. The free speech movement. Remember that for those of you of the uh, the older persuasion? 60s, college campuses. Say whatever you want. Any any corner of any college campus. Get a soapbox and speak. Want to talk about communism? Go for it. Socialism? Go for it. Marxism? Go for it. Want to talk about global cooling? Well, that's what they were talking about back then. Go for it. Want to start preaching from the Bible? Hellfire and damnation. Go right ahead. It was a wild time from what I hear. But at the very same place where the free speech movement was born, the University of California, Berkeley, and now Janet Napolitano, remember her? Big sis. She runs the UC system. I think she's making something like $750,000 a year. Plus, they get these unbelievable housing perks and But um, she's had seminars and put together a whole big book on what to say and what not to say on the campus. The things you can't say. Are you ready? America's a melting pot. Can't say that. No, 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 no. America's a melting pot. That is, that's, well, that implies people of color are lazy. That's what they say. People of color are lazy if you say that. So who's really the racist? Sounds to me like the person putting this together is the racist. Oh, don't ever, ever ask somebody who's Asian or Latino or Native American, why are you so quiet? That's tantamount to giving the order, assimilate into the dominant culture. This is right from the pamphlet. How about this? Don't ever say to an Asian person, how did you get so good in math? Can't do that either. Uh, let me, oh, how about this one? You also have... One race. There's only one race, the human race. Can't say that. America's the land of opportunity. Nope, nope, nope. And it goes on and on and on. Deportations. We now know, thanks to an investigation by Fox News, that since we had the border surge, where all these people are coming to our southern border, claiming amnesty. I'm a child. Amnesty. 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 All these children, some of them with beards. And MS-13 tattoos, you know, those children. And we had to take them at the word. Excuse me, it looks as if you're uh, 25. And that's a pretty thick beard you have on your face. And that tattoo, hmm, MS-13. 
My goodness, how old are you? 17. Well, come on in. That's just fine. We've now found that 85% of these people have skipped out on their court hearings. Oh, yes. We were doing this because we didn't want them to live in the shadows. Right now they're living in the shadows. 85% of these illegals have just sort of disappeared. Obama and the hostages. We have Americans that are being held and have been held hostage by ISIS. It's Ramadan. Happy Ramadan, everybody. Here's Obama's gift to the terrorists. So now he's provided for them a new revenue stream. They own banks, oil fields, refineries. They're bringing in millions and millions of dollars a day. And now, hey, want a little extra change? Go take an American hostage. Because Americans are now allowed to negotiate their own hostage deal. You know, U.S. law prohibits the government and private individuals from paying money or making other concessions to terrorists, but no more. Obama's turning a blind eye to that law. Boy, he loves that, doesn't he? Just loves to turn a blind eye to the law. Or better yet, take out that pen and change the law on the fly. How do we let him get away with this? Oh, then, then we have... uh, I'm reading here, this is a Washington Examiner story. Dozens of members of the House GOP's most conservative faction met today to discuss ways to counteract the decision of Boehner, the Speaker, and other leaders to seek retribution against members who vote against the, well, for example, the trade bill. So this is what happens. You're elected by your constituents. They're expecting something of you. You come from a very conservative or, for that matter, a very liberal district. You're Constituents expect something of you as their representative. You go to Washington, D.C., and God forbid, as a Republican, for example, God forbid you vote the will of your constituents, because if it doesn't align with Boehner's will and his ways, oh, you'll be marginalized. They'll do it with money. First, they do it with assignments. Well, you're not going to have a very good assignment then. You'll be a a part of the... uh, the cleanup crew committee. You're not going to get a good assignment. Your legacy is going to be crap in this House of uh, House of Representatives. That's what they do. And if you continue to buck the trend, guess what? Come next election time, no money for you. No money for you. So they're trying to find ways. It's a, the House Freedom Caucus, uh, a group of GOP members of about 40 of the most conservative members. They're going to be holding discussions later tonight, in order to find ways to get back at Boehner. Well, God bless you guys. You're doing the will of God right now by doing that. Somebody's got to. Deportations, Obama hostages. Oh, we've got another man, this time from North Carolina, arrested for trying to team up with ISIS. He wanted to kill a thousand... Go to michaelsavage.com. You'll see this for yourself. He wanted to kill a thousand Americans. Everybody keeps telling us his name is Justin Sullivan. I want to know his new Islamic name. Just a little celebration of Ramadan. Can you tell us? Oh, then we've got this story. The sex slave trade amongst ISIS. Because it's Ramadan, the holy month, they're having a contest. The best person to memorize the Quran will win a sex slave. Beautiful. Wonderful. Yeah, this is how they do it, huh? And the religion of peace, when it's actually practiced properly, is that the idea here? I'm reading one of the uh, promotions from this. This is, of course, in ISIS country, the caliphate. We ask the great Lord to make your life easier and to grant you with what he loves and what pleases him. That would be a young woman as young as nine. So I guess their Lord and their God is pleased by sex with little kids. Wonderful religion of peace you guys got. Hey, maybe it's time for a reformation, huh? We've got that one for you. We've also got the oh wait, one more one more. There's this is a this is a trending story on the on the internet. You've got a woman who was an ISIS bride recruiter. I'm just reading here, warning European girls of the actual caliphate horrors. She's a Syrian woman. She was scared to death by ISIS when they came to her town a couple years ago. So what did she do? Well. This is how those 57 Islamic countries became Islamic. You see enough heads getting lopped off and you figure, okay, I'm going to go along with the program. That's how they all became Islamic. 
So this woman from Syria saw how ISIS was operating. She said just a few years ago, she was wearing dresses. She had Christian friends. She listened to pop music, and she went out dancing. That was in 2011. ISIS came to town. She was afraid. Okay, burqa for me. I want the one with the slit across the eyes. That's the one I want. Yeah, all black. I know it's 110 degrees outside, but I'm fine with that. Then she became a recruiter, bringing in young girls from Europe. And then once she saw how they were treated by the ISIS members, she had a change of heart, so now she's speaking out. She's speaking out. And she's trying to let the young women know, quote, the caliphate is not what you think it is. Women are whipped. They're sold. They're stoned. Corpses are on display publicly for weeks. She's speaking out. But sadly, she's only one voice. So many more need to be heard. And sadly, sadly, we have a president who seems to be making it easier for these guys to do their thing. Or is it just my imagination? And then we've had the callers. We've had the callers, including Phil at WABC. Phil, thanks for checking into the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael. Go right ahead. Might be your first call from Philadelphia ever. Um, here's the we p- love the city of brotherly love. Listen, political correctness is a communist expression dating back to the earliest part of the Soviet Union. Commissars would make sure that government department um, bureaucrats uh, were politically um, in tune with Lenin. If they weren't, they were subject to being shot. In the late 1960s, the terrorist weather underground revived the expression here in the uh, United States. I can remember an article in the New York Times in 69 about the famous um, attempted bombing where the weather underground blew themselves up uh, constructing a bomb that they were going to deliver at an enlisted man's dance at Fort Fort Dix, New Jersey. They talked to each other uh, about keeping up their courage by making sure that their uh, politics were, quote, politically correct. And, of course, this term is now inherited by any, uh, has been interesting by any other good Democrat. So they coined the term back in the 60s. Well, not really. It goes back to the 1920s, as I said. But Well, sure it did, it. but they didn't, they didn't use that exact term, which we're using today. And let's be realistic. I mean, this is why uh, in these... This is why you had Huxley and you had Orwell writing what they were writing, explaining how down the line this is what happens in society. They were looking at the template of history, in this particular case, you know, the rise of of Karl Marx. I appreciate your call. But the point is, when it comes to this line of thinking, you see, conservatism isn't an ideology. You have to understand that. Conservatism is a worldview. It's based on history. A conservative would look at the world and say, okay, well, this worked, but this doesn't work. So let's make sure we don't do that again. But this over here, yes, this is where we need to go. That's why Karl Marx said, and I've written about it extensively in my book, for example, Eco-Tyranny. This is why Karl Marx said history means nothing. History means nothing. Now, the liberal, screw history. It means nothing. Their worldview is an ideology that vacillates over time. And it, it, uh, it has an insatiable lust and desire. It craves power and control. Something else Marx t- talked about extensively with his laws of matter, which broken down really... Just I can, I can boil it down for you in a nutshell. His laws of matter basically say this. Some people are born with a better brain than others. Those with the better brain have some sort of perhaps even metaphysical responsibility to rule over those with the lesser brain. Because when left to their own devices, those with the lesser brain will kill one another and destroy the planet. Hence the need for a heavy-handed government, complete with lots of regulations, lots of laws, lots of control. And it would seem as if everything we've been talking about now in the Savage Nation for these last few hours 
brings us to this point in the discussion. We'll come back. We're going to take some of your calls to close it out at 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Don't forget, Countdown to Mecca. Now, this is Michael's latest fiction book. Uh, he's, he's written some wonderful nonfiction books. This is a novel. It's part of the trilogy. It's very exciting. Countdown to Mecca. And this would be a great read as we enter the travel season, the vacation season, 4th of July, just around the corner. An opportunity to celebrate America and thinking about our freedoms and thinking about these days in which we live. For such a time as this, Countdown to America. Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. One of the stories that we've talked about this morning is really getting a lot of feedback uh, via email. I've heard from you, the caller. And it's, it's a trending story. But this has to do with the University of California system encouraging faculty and students to purge potentially offensive words and phrases from the vocabulary. For example, America is a melting pot. Or America is the land of opportunity. Janet Napolitano, who runs the University of California system, now 10 campuses, says can't say that anymore. Here is Jeffrey calling from the left coast. Jeffrey, thanks for joining us. You're on the air. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I was calling in to talk because I'm a recent graduate from uh, Sacramento State, and uh, I dealt with a lot of the political correctness while I was taking school classes. And uh, the biggest issue I had is that I'm a conservative Republican in a liberal setting, and I'm a mass communications major, and any time I tried to speak on a subject matter that wasn't with the status quo, which is what everybody else in class is discussing, I was made to be demonized. I was treated like I had primitive views. I've actually been told by teachers to stop talking during class because what I was speaking on was what my teacher said was primitive. And I mean, I was raised by my grandparents, so I have a tendency to go back to views that are maybe a little bit more conservative than, say, my parents who were born in the 60s and raised through the 70s and 80s. But to be told by your liberal teacher that you're a stereotypical hegemonic masculine man with primitive views because you said that reverse racism exists in schools or with affirmative action. And all my teachers ever say to me is, you're a product of white privilege. You need to understand you've been raised as a white Caucasian male and you have no idea what it's like to deal with what these other people deal with on a daily basis. So and there you go. Was, Game, set, match. They just shut you down just like that. No no debating, no discussing the issues. Bingo. White privilege. That's it. Appreciate your call. Thanks for putting a nice, neat little bow around it. We've got a lot of work to do, friends. By the way, it's the Savage Newsletter, michaelsavage.com. It arrives a couple, three times a week in your inbox. It's totally free. Just go to michaelsavage.com for that. The book, Countdown to Mecca. Don't forget it. And don't forget me. I look forward to joining you next time. Brian Sussman. It's been a blast, as always. Filling in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. Savage.